Epilepsy. Epilepsy is characterized by abnormal firing of neurons, causing seizures. But a patient with this disorder can lead a normal life with timely diagnosis and proper treatment. In this session, we will discuss about classification of epileptic seizures, potential causes and pathological mechanisms of epilepsy, and management principles. By the end of this session, you will be able to classify seizures based on the organ involved, identify the potential causes of epilepsy, describe the pathological mechanisms of epilepsy, and discuss the management principles and follow-up. Epilepsy is a chronic neurological disorder or a group of disorders of unpredictable origin, characterized by abnormal firing of neurons. It may be presented as unprovoked seizures, with or without convulsions. Seizure is a paroxysmal event, characterized by abnormal excessive hypersynchronous discharge of cortical neurons, which results in an electrical activity. Now, let us talk about the clinical classification of epilepsy. According to the International Classification of Epileptic Seizures, and based on the clinical description and electrophysiological findings, epilepsy is classified as partial seizures, generalized seizures, unclassified seizures, and status epilepticus. Let us discuss each of them in detail. Partial seizures occur due to an unusual electrical activity that originates and affects only a certain part of the brain, known as focal region. This is further classified into three categories based on the level of impairment. One, simple partial seizures. Two, complex partial seizures. Three, secondary generalized seizures. Let us discuss about the simple partial seizures. An individual with simple partial seizures presents with simple or elementary symptoms, like finger or handshake, dizziness, somatosensory, and other psychic symptoms, like auditory and visual hallucinations. The concentration is not altered in case of simple partial seizures. The second category under partial seizures are the complex partial seizures. A simple partial seizure followed by the altered consciousness, with or without automatisms, is considered as the complex partial seizure. The seizure usually begins with an aura. Patient may present with disorganized and purposeless behavior with excessive emotions and anxiety. There is either no movement or inappropriate movement with respect to surroundings. The last category under the partial seizures are the secondary generalized seizures. It has got the characteristics of both partial as well as generalized seizures. The seizure begins at the focal region, just like the partial seizures, and then spread to the entire brain. This means that the primary event or partial seizure has already begun, but the patient may not recall the initial event. The onset of seizure is partial initially, which progress to generalized tonic-clonic seizures. The seizure duration lasts no more than a few minutes. These seizures are so brief that they are very hard to detect. Generalized seizures are a separate category of epileptic seizures, which, unlike partial seizures, involves entire brain. The neuronal firing is bilaterally symmetrical and involves both the hemispheres of the brain. They occur as a result of underlying abnormality in the neurological system, or may be of unknown cause. During the seizure activity, there is an intense rigidity in the entire body, followed by alternate contractions and relaxation of the muscle. Based on the clinical presentation and the area in which the seizure activity is seen, the generalized seizures are further categorized into many classes. Let us discuss each of them in detail. Firstly, let us talk about the absent seizures. Absent seizures is also known as pettit malepilepsy. The patient with absent seizures may present with altered consciousness for a very brief period, say 10 to 30 seconds. The common clinical manifestations include staring and change in postural tone. The patient may experience 100 or more such episodes in a day. The onset of the seizure activity occurs at an early young age, say around 3 to 16 years, and may disappear by 40 years. The other category of seizures are the myoclonic seizures, which are sudden, with an involuntary jerking of facial, limb, and trunk muscles in a rather synchronous manner. These seizures are brief and isolated, but are also rapidly repetitive. Let us now discuss the clonic and tonic seizures, 
Colonic seizures are characterized by sustained muscle contractions, followed by alternate relaxations. It is the most common form of epilepsy. The other type includes the tonic seizures, characterized by sustained muscle stiffening. Next, let us discuss about the atonic seizures. It is also known as astatic or akinetic seizures, which occur as a result of loss of muscle tone. Atonic seizures usually occur due to head injuries, and the clinical presentation includes dropping limb, head drop, and slumping to the ground. The other important category of seizures includes grand mal epilepsy, or tonic-clonic seizures. This includes the characteristics of both tonic and clonic seizures with increased severity. The patient may present with loss of consciousness associated with peripheral cyanosis and back arches. The patient becomes stiff and may have fall episodes associated with respiratory distress. Jerks are commonly observed as a feature of clonic seizure as quick cessation of contraction and relaxation of muscles. Biting of tongue is other common clinical presentation in patients, and this condition lasts for about one minute. Last class under generalized seizures include infantile spasms. It is also known as West syndrome and are the seizures observed in infants. There is continuous muscle and arm stiffness in such babies, which is presented as head forward position. There is poor development of milestones in children with infantile spasms. The other two minor yet important category of seizures include unclassified and intractable seizures. Let us first talk about the unclassified seizures. It is of unknown onset and usually occurs during sleep and is common in neonates. The other category of seizures includes intractable seizures. These are seizures which do not respond to any medication. The major classification also includes status epilepticus, prolonged seizures or series of repetitive abnormal firing of neurons leads to a life-threatening emergency called status epilepticus. The patient with status epilepticus will experience 30 minutes of uninterrupted seizure activity without a return to normal consciousness.